What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast show. My name is Paul Verzi, and you guys are listening to episode 599. I am doing this one solo. Um, I am under the weather, guys. Not feeling great. I'm under the weather. Uh, could not make it into studio today, but I did not want to deprive you people. I did not want to deprive you real Verzi Effect fans of uh of the show so the show must go on i'm not feeling great but i could tough this one out and that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna tough this one out and we are gonna have a good time i'm gonna talk a little shit uh and uh i don't care i know the numbers aren't always as great as when i'm in studio with the guest but the real verzi effectors the ones that jump on board they don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck and you know what quite honestly a lot of you guys like my solo ones and that's what I'm here to do. This is 599. I am one away from 600. I don't even know what I'm going to do with that. I've been so busy. I don't even know exactly how I'm going to celebrate 600. Uh, it's not a big, it's not 500. It's not 250, but it's still another hundred. Um, if you count from when I started doing this thing, audio years and years ago. So uh, hopefully you guys will see my nose is itchy and uh, a little stuffy, but I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, so I hope everybody is doing good. I hope everybody is, um, happy and healthy. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope all of your table conversations were fine. I hope there was no drunk uncle talking about politics. I hope that there was no drunk aunt yelling at that drunk uncle who was talking politics. I hope your household was not like that Christmas episode of the movie, The Bear. And if you don't know what that is, watch the show, The Bear on Hulu, which I loved. And when you get to that Christmas episode, tell me that that was not the most intense, nerve wracking episode of a television series you have ever seen in your life, because I think it might be. Um, but now I got to tell you guys something. I mentioned this on the podcast. I think I had uh, Steph Tolliff. And by the way, shout out to my last guests. Shout out to Mike Feeney. Uh, shout out to Steph uh, Tolliff. We had a great time. Uh, I know you guys love the show. Um, but I had mentioned that the last solo one I did, guys, the last solo TVE I did, um, we thought that I hit the mute button, but I did not hit the mute button. The... The bottom, the, the thing that connects to the bottom of the microphone is loose. I have it set up now where it's not going to happen. But after three minutes, okay, and I did over an hour or around an hour of what I thought was one of the best TVEs of all time. And I'm not just saying that because there was a time traveler, a time traveler update. Now, I don't know if some of you heard me read it. I don't know if it got cut out on some of you. I don't know how it works. I'm going to read it again. Okay. Um, so because some people missed it and couldn't get it, but we did the time traveler update. I talked about an incident that happened with a couple getting up and leaving my show in New Brunswick. If you heard it, guys, I apologize. You can fast forward, but if not, um, I mean, I gave a lot of inside baseball on this episode and the most important craziest thing ever was the time traveler uh, episode update or, or that that's what I did. And it got cut out absolute sin, but I have to tell you uh, I have the, I have the text here. I will give you guys an update on all this shit. I will tell you about what happened at the um, stress factory with that couple that got up and left because I know that I put a clip out about it. Um, so I'm going to try to get to the things that got cut out. It was so devastating to hear my producer say, dude, after you were three minutes in, it just cut out. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because I was really proud of that episode. I was flowing. And now uh, I'm a little under the weather. and I'm still going to give you guys going to give you guys a good one. Um, but first, I want to thank I looked last night, guys, the Gramercy Theater is getting filled up and uh, we're not even in December yet. So thank you so much. Uh, I believe the room is half filled already 
And um, we're not even in December. So thank you guys, whoever bought tickets. If you're on the fence about buying tickets, I could tell you it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great show. It's New York City. It's New Year's Eve. People are going to be pumped up. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be giving you my new hour, uh, probably even newer stuff. I mean, it's going to be a great time. 8 p.m. Uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve, Gramercy Theater, New York City. You'll be home early or you stay out late. Either way, you're going to have a great time. It's a great location, too, right off the West Side Highway. Um, and also, I got to thank everybody who's buying tickets for Chicago, man. Chicago, uh, the Den Theater. I'm shooting my next special February 24th in Chicago. That's a Saturday night. Uh, both shows are, are starting to fill up right now, so I'm excited about that. We're going to be adding Mohegan Sun. or we Yeah, Mohegan Sun in January. I will also be in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Uncle Vinny's the 27th, 28th of January. Uh, looks like there's going to be an announcement of me headlining my own show for, uh, the, uh, the LA Netflix festival, maybe in May. I, that's not confirmed, but I'll let you guys know, uh, all that stuff and, uh, and more dates are coming. So you go to paulversey.com for all of those dates. Now I got to get into this and I got to tell you guys this. And again, if you heard this, I'm sorry, but a lot of people did not. And there's a lot of new TVE listeners. So I will abbreviate the beginning story. And then I will get into the, the, the text message that I got. For you people that don't know, and if you want to stop this recording now and go back to an old TVE that says Time Traveler, uh, you can do that because it's probably one of the most interesting podcasts that I've ever done. And I, I'm glad that I, that I was it's, it was on my show because it was just a freak thing. But I am in... And I can't do this without explaining what happened first to everybody. So I'm sorry. Um, but I'll try to make it as quick and painless and, and give you all the details as much as I can. I'm performing in Arizona a couple years back during pandemic. There was a table to the left of me in the front row, four dudes, all, all fans of mine. And they were getting hammered. And it took them a long time to pay their bill and they were being obnoxious. And then it got to the point where they had to be kicked out. Then they turned on me. And it was a whole fucking thing. Or a couple of them turned on me. It was just a shitty situation. But the security guy, Adrian, shout out to Adrian. He helped me. And he got the guys out. So I said, hey, man, I like to smoke cigars after shows. You want to come with me? We go out there. And I'm going to sneeze. Oh, oh, shit. All right. See, I'm working sick, guys. I'm working sick here. So... Adrian and I go out to a cigar lounge in um, Phoenix and we're having a good time. And towards the end of closing, when we're smoking our cigar, a man walks in and he's dressed like he's in the twenties and he's got a cane and he looks kind of young, man. He looks like I would say late twenties, early thirties. And he's got a cane and he walks up and he's talking old school. He's got the fucking vest. I mean, this dude was done up. And mind you, this is like a Saturday night, man. This is like a prime time go out the strip down there. And he walks in and he goes up to the bartender and he's like, hey, sir, can I? He's like, and we're like, oh, nice. Have. Oh, thank you, fellas. Like he's talking like he's not from this time. And uh, but you could be like, all right, whatever, man. Maybe the guy's a loon, whatever. So he orders a scotch and a cigar and the guy goes, oh, I can't give you a cigar. We're going to close in like 10 minutes, you know. So the guy drinks his whiskey and he goes, all right, well, then I'll be on my way. Take care. And he walks and he walks by and I talked, we talked about his outfit real quick and he was very short, but he talked way older than somebody at that age would. And then I just see him. What caught my eye was I see him walk up the stairs with this cane. And when he walked up the stairs with the cane, it was like too good. It was like, I was like, what? Oh, damn. If you said bless you, thank you. If not, whatever. But anyway, so he, uh, oh shit. So, um, he walks up the stairs with the cane and he's walking up the stairs fine. Like, but like too good, like not an act. 
So I'm like, it just struck me weird, right? So he kind of walks into his parking lot, doesn't get into a car and just kind of disappears. So we're talking about it. It's weird. The guy says, hey, we got to close, but you guys can take your cigars across the street. There's a bar with an outdoor patio. You could smoke your cigars on the outdoor patio. We're like, great. So me and Adrian, we go there and we're, we're uh, you know, smoking and having a good time. And all of a sudden we look and who do we see coming down the street? This guy again. And he walks and at first he like walked and like, I don't know, we couldn't see him, but then he reappeared. It was weird, man. And uh, finally, like when he walked up, I was like, are we the only people seeing him? It was weird. So I walked up to a table. I go, did you guys see a guy? And they were like, no, maybe whatever. But anyway, long story short, he does appear. And now he's talking to us in front of people. Thank God. Cause we didn't want to think we were nuts. And thank God it was two of us. And we go, oh, hey, man, there you are. He goes, oh, yes, the gentleman from the cigar thing. So now we're like curious and we're asking questions and we ask him what he does. And he said he was a locksmith and a silent movie actor. And we were like, what's wrong with you? What's up with the cane? And he's like, oh, I fell on my gun during a scene. And it was very strange, man. And then he takes out a cigar case that was leather. And it said like 1918 or 19 something on it. Really, really weird. And... um you know, he said that his name was Jacob and uh, I was like, all right, you know, whatever we talked, neither of us took a picture, didn't think to. And I remember the one thing that really stood out is when he, we were talking a little bit, he cursed and it sounded really out of place. He tried to talk like us or with us. And he said, fuck in a sentence. And when he said it, it was out of place and weird and seemed like he was forcing it. He said like, he didn't live too far from there or work too far from there. Just very strange. Anyway, he leaves, and then this is where things get weird. As he's walking away, uh, and again, I apologize if you heard this, but as he's walking away, I kind of just look at my drink, and I look up at Adrian. I go, man, that was weird. And all of a sudden, three, four seconds go by, maybe five tops, and Adrian looks up, and he goes, dude, dude, what the fuck? And I go, he goes, dude, look how, no, he, goes, he put his head up, he goes, dude, look how far he got. Holy shit, look how far he got, dude. And I looked up. And in the time that it would take you, if you're walking in a parking lot past cars, in the time that it would take you to walk past five cars, um, this man was like a football field away. It was bizarre. It was like he glitched. And it, I'm not joking. And that really, really freaked us out. Okay. And I'm, it was something I never seen before. The fact he's, in, by the way, he's with a cane and a limp. Then we left the bar and we timed ourselves walking past cars. And it was like this man would have had to pick up the cane, sprint, and then put it back down. It was just nuts. So I let it be. I talk about it on the next Verzi effect. I'm in full detail. You could go and, and listen to that. And then during that thing, I FaceTimed Adrian. I go, you know what? This was not planned, guys. Let me FaceTime him and let me get him on the show. And I said, hey, did we, he, he answered the phone. He goes, let me pull off into a parking lot. I said, dude, did we plan this? He said, no. I said, tell the story about what happened Saturday night when we, when we saw this guy. And I stayed there quiet. And he said almost exactly what I said verbatim. Now, people reached out to me. Somebody said, hey, my mother knows what this is. And he wrote me this whole thing about portholes and that people travel through different dimensions and stuff. And she seemed very, as a matter of fact, and I never got a chance to talk to her, but she described that, that some people can do that, whatever. Then I get another fan saying, I also saw this guy in Arizona, same thing. He glitched, he went fast. It was weird. She wrote me and I read that. And then I told the story on Tiger Belly with Bobby Lee and Kalila. And then, people, then I got this. This is real, and I will read this to you, and uh, it's freaked out. And again, if you heard me say this before, I'm sorry. I don't think anybody heard me read this because I really think it was cut off at the time. If not, I apologize, but I'll do it again. Don't worry. I'll talk about other shit. But check this out. I got this. I got this after I told the story on Tiger Belly. Okay? Here's here here goes. This was I sent it to Bobby Lee too afterwards, but this is from a fan. And here here goes. And by the way, this was years ago, and now I just got this after talking about it on the Tiger Belly. Hey Paul, I love the comedy and all the podcasts. I've heard you tell the story of the time traveler a few times, and my girl wanted me to write in and tell you uh, I've seen the same guy. 
I saw him late uh, at night while I was deployed to Mon uh, uh, Guantanamo Bay. We were out on the track and he had just come back from the bar on post. We had a quick conversation with him after his outfit threw us and same, uh, and same as you, I turned to tell my buddy how strange the whole thing was. When I turned around, he was completely gone. Uh, and we were in a wide open sports complex with soccer fields, baseball fields, and football fields. There was nowhere for him to go. When you talk about his clothes uh, and the cane, I got actual chills. Dude, I just got the chills. Uh, uh, being in the guy's presence made you feel like something weird was for sure going down. Anyway, thought I'd let you know, how did he get onto Guantanamo Bay Naval Base uh, or what the fuck he uh, or what the fuck he could have been doing there. I'll never be able to mentally figure out. Keep doing your thing, brother. OK, how wild is that? And, you know, I never want to come on a podcast or come on my podcast and say I saw something I didn't see. I didn't want to exaggerate something. I don't want to say, oh, I saw something in the sky and it didn't look like a plane. Did I see a UFO? I'm not going to do shit like that. But when I see something that is off and wrong, um, I got to talk about it. Usually I feel like I'm right. But the fact that that happened and the fact that he had a cane and the fact that he, you know, the same thing and the dude was on Guant Guantanamo Bay um, really, really freaks me out, you know, and it's really, really wild. And um, I think time travel is a thing. I, I think that there are things out there that we can't explain. I think that is a thing. I think that it was proven that it could be something that could be done. We just didn't have the technology to do it. But then I think, well, if you could time travel, then maybe there is a technology to do it. I don't know. Maybe that's just overly nerd thinking about things or whatever it is. But that is uh, very, very wild. I want to thank that fan. I want to thank that fan so much for writing me that it completely freaked me out, but kind of validated what I saw. Um, there was no way for this individual to get as far as he did. That's the thing. The Listen, you could explain weird clothes. You could explain a dude, maybe the dude's fucked up and he's just like, that's his security thing. He dresses like the 20s. I don't know. Maybe the dude, and I'm not saying this being dis. I'm really, really not saying this being disrespectful, but maybe the dude is mentally, you know, sometimes if people are, you know, when I watched uh, Love on the Spectrum, uh, some of the people that, you know, had autism, they want, you know, they wanted to be like a, in a castle, you know, they want to be, they talk about these things. So I don't know, those things can be explained. Yes, he feels this way. He dresses this way. It makes him comfortable. He goes to cigar lounges again. Fine. But the walking with the cane up the stairs was really, really telling. And for me, obviously, walking that fast and being that far down. So um, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's the truth. That's what happened. And um, yeah, I mean, was he a time traveler? I don't know. But was it weird? Yes. Is it weird that other people are seeing this dude? Uh, I, Guantanamo Bay? Yes. So there you go. Um, that is the time travel update portion of the show. I hope that this didn't cut out, but it looks like the mic is still on. If this thing cuts out again, then I'm going to be like, look, something's telling me not to talk about this anymore. <laughs> um, but another thing that I talked about was when um, I was at the stress factory in New Jersey. And by the way, I want to thank again, just let me do this in the middle of the show. I want to thank everybody, honestly, who has bought tickets to all of the cities that they saw me in this year. Thank you. It's because of you that I get booked. It's because of you guys going to the clubs and watching me grow and giving you new hours and doing what I love and you guys enjoying it. Uh, it's because of you guys watching the Netflix special. It's because of you guys. Um, that are buying tickets and I can't thank you guys enough for all the cities, Jersey and Arizona and everywhere else, man, LA and fucking everywhere in between that I've been 
this year, so many different places, North Carolina, Indianapolis, uh, Cleveland, Chicago, Pittsburgh, um, New York, Toronto. I know I'm missing a bunch here, but it's just it, everywhere, man. It, it's been really great. And um, I'm going to keep this puppy rolling. But I really wanted to thank you guys, man. It's, it, it means the world. But when I was in Jersey, um, another crazy thing happened where and I put the clip out where people were leaving. But uh, and I said I was going to put the clip out after I described it, but I'll describe it in more detail now. I'm on stage and it was the early show Friday. And it's great and it's packed. And um, was the early show or the late show? I think it was the early show. And um, there was an old couple and they were down, down. I'm doing an abortion joke. They're laughing. The wife was, they were married 42 years. You saw the clip. The wife's giving me a fist pump. One time I gave the husband a fist pump. And then I said something later and the wife goes, ah, ah, fist pump. And the place go nuts. They're laughing. They're into it. And then I make fun of Trump and they're kind of into it. And then I make fun of Biden and they completely shut down. And I hear from the stage while I'm on stage, I hear, well, it was a great night till that. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm going like, what? And now they're distracting people. And then I hear like, uh, the ruin the whole night, didn't it? And the guy's just staring and wouldn't look at me. And I'm talking like, they were like, some of my favorite older couple crowd ever to this nightmare now. And the guy's I'm going, what's going on here, guy? And he's like, well, you know, you you made fun of us. He's going, that's the president of the United States. And, you know, you made Donald Trump look a little better. I go, did you not hear me say that I voted for Eli Manning? Did you not hear me make fun of Trump and call him petty? But now that I'm making fun of Biden, and I was, I was going at Biden hard. I was making fun of him, but like, now, because of that, and they couldn't stop and they're talking. And then, you know, and, and then I'm like, ma'am, you got it. You guys got to stop. They were distracted. She goes, oh, you could hear me. I go, yeah, I'm right in front of you. And then they just kept talking. I'm like, guys, I'm going to have to kick you out. And then you saw the rest of the you saw the rest of the clip. Uh, finally, they got up. And then as they're walking out, they're trying to plead with other people. The guy goes, you know what I'm saying? And dudes in the crowd are like, nah, beat it, man. Get out of here. Too much. My fans in New Jersey were fucking no, no, nah, get out of here, dude. Come on, stop it. No, like they were trying to buy, you know, doing that. And then as they were getting to the door, uh, you know, I just go, God, I hope Trump wins again, just to kind of bust their balls. But it was really shitty, man, because it was like everything was a go. I did an abortion joke and the guy gave me a fist pump, I think. So it was just one of those things where I'm going, oh, man, dude, these people are just brainwashed, dude. These fucking people are sitting home watching whatever they're watching. Apparently, in this case, CNN, MSN, fucking Rachel, all these fucking people and not even take not even taking a joke. And I didn't do it stupid. You guys know I always I'll make fun of the. I'm always going to make fun of Trump and Biden if I get a chance and something happens in the news because it's funny. They're fucking almost in their 80s and. Biden's falling asleep and shit and doesn't know where he is. I mean, it's like ridiculous. I'm a comedian. I'm doing my job. So that was really shitty too. Um, to have, that was the first time I thought like, oh my God, this is like such a, they're like the older crowd that's like hip with everybody. Great. And then that, and it was just like, and the woman was like fucking five drinks deep. She was like five drinks deep. So that was, you know, that's what happened with that. But, um, yeah. So other than other than incidences like that, the tour has been great. Everything has been great. But I've come to realize that you're never, ever. This is the one thing that's a for sure thing in life. Here's a for sure thing in life. A for sure thing in life is this. You got to pay your taxes or you get in trouble. You're going to die. You know, uh, and there is always going to be an asshole. There is going to always be an asshole in life. There's no getting around that there will be an asshole. I got to fix this because if this happens again, um, I'm sure you guys had an asshole at your Thanksgiving table. Even if the asshole didn't listen, listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to your family. Even if the asshole didn't become the asshole on Thanksgiving this year, even if that asshole 
was on their best behavior and they didn't do their typical assholey things, there's still an asshole there. Okay. And I got to tell you something, man. I am for the first time in my life going to tell family members that if I don't like somebody that they're associated with, I just don't want them around on Thanksgiving or on the holidays. And if that gives me a problem with my family member who I love and who they love me, then so be it. But I'm going to be like your choice of your person or your friend or whoever you chose that you wanted to fucking come. And me and Bobby Kelly talked about it on Bone to Pick. Whoever you choose in your life that you want to introduce to us and introduce to your family, if it's a no-go with the majority of us or like if it's just like nah, then I'm saying something. I'm getting tired of the, the well, you have to. And it's like I you kind of don't. You kind of don't because I can go and see you when that person's not around. Now, listen, I don't have this or I don't have like a lot of I mean, everybody's got the person that you're like, all right, I don't have like an awful thing, awful situation. But I was thinking about life and the time we're here and the good times that you spend and how priceless those times are. And I don't have time for your insecurity and your bullshit and your projections. I'm I'm also doing something new where I'm going to start weeding out friends in this business, in comedy, that are just, that just um, basically project their shit on me. Um, I'm just going to be like, not that I'd be like, hey, I want to do it. You just like, I know to keep my arms length away. I know who I'm going to be talking to more. I know who I'm going to be talking to less. And I'm just not going to do it. If you got baggage and you got shit going on and you need my help or my friendship, I'm there. But don't call me up and start projecting your shit on me and making me feel a certain way because you have fucking damage. I'm not doing that shit anymore. That's over, dog. That is over. I'm done. If somebody doesn't like it, they don't like it. But it's like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm really not. So um, I'm, I'm on, I'm on a, it's a new Pauly. You know, I, I just had a birthday. 2024 is coming on. It's a new birthday. If they don't make sense, they got to go. That's it. Can Douglas come over? I know he got drunk last year. He feels really bad that he threw up on your mother's dresser. He just, he was going through a hard time. Can he come back? No. Douglas is out. Get the fuck out of here. And you know what? You shouldn't come because you actually had the fucking nerve to ask me that question. Get out. You and fucking Douglas, get out. Eat your eat your dessert in the driveway and get the fuck out of my house. That's it. Done. You come to the house and you've caused a scene. It's over. Don't ask again. That's it. That's it. I don't care. I don't care. I'm sick of these alcoholics who always have their pity excuses. And that's another thing, dude. Oh, now you guys got me on one. And I'm, I'm tired of these people that are like, you know, in and out of fucking rehab and then they come out and they go, yeah, well, I really, this time I wanted to go. Well, fuck you. How about, how about your friends and family, the fourth and third time thought that you, that, that you wanted to go to get help. But now, now that you really fucking hit it now, all the shit you put people through and now this is when you want to do it. And then you're probably going to go back and fuck them too. I'm tired of that shit too. It's like, I'm tired of it too. Um, you know, and listen, granted, you do have to, I'm not trying to be insensitive to those people. Rest in peace, Matthew Perry, rest his soul. But he said, he's like, you're not going to get help until you truly want to. But I'm talking about the people that are like, I want to. And, and just for like another chance with their family. And they just, and they don't, they don't. It's like an excuse. They're looking to get out and get back at it. It's like, there are people like that. I'm tired of that shit. I'm tired of the pity party. I'm tired of poor me. I'm tired of all that shit. It's like, if you don't know by now what the fuck you need to do and how to treat people and how to act and not show up places like that and not show up drunk and not be rude, man, then I got no nothing, nothing for you. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. And I'm feeling good. Um, So... Anyway, let's move to some positive stuff. I hope you guys did have a good Thanksgiving. And by the way, by the way, by the way, don't, don't do me the disservice. If you like me, great. But don't ever come at me and tell me Thanksgiving could fuck with Christmas. Okay. And again, look, if you're Jewish, I get it. 
if I was Jewish, I probably would do what my Jewish friends do and go to some tropical island and come back when it's all over because that's how incredible it is. But let's not. Let's not put Thanksgiving anywhere near the joy and the blissfulness and the incredible time that is Christmas. The birth of Jesus Christ. The gifts under the trees, the giving. Don't forget the giving, not just the getting. The giving, handing somebody something that they really wanted, watching their look on their face when they get it. Jingle bells. Fucking silver bells, silent night. Okay, all that stuff on the radio, the house decorations, the Christmas lights, the illumination that happens on Christmas, the two days, the Christmas Eve, because the big man's coming to town. Then you get the next day, all of that stuff. Just don't, Bobby Kelly, I love you. Dear friend of mine, podcast partner, I mean, the whole deal. But he's wrong. He likes Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving is a quick little thing. You're tired. It's over. You leave. Oh, come on. Christmas? Look, it's not even December 1st right now. It is November 29th right now. And it feels like Christmas. My house is decorated. The songs are on. The movies are on. Not even December 1. You get a month of this shit. Christmas, all that shit. People knock on your door, sing. You don't get that shit in Thanksgiving. Come on. So let's just, you could love Thanksgiving. Look, I love it. You sit down with family that you love. You have a couple glasses of wine, a couple cocktails. You watch football for a while. It's a great day. But Thanksgiving is a football Sunday on steroids. Let's be honest. That's really what it is. <laughs> Thanksgiving is NFL Sunday with on steroids with family over for a meal. And by the way, by the way, turkey, look, I mean, it's turkey, you know, and I, I mean, the one thing I'm not going to do, the another thing I'm not going to, I'm on one today. What can you say? I'm on one today. I'm not feeling well. I decided to do this. I'm, I think I'm taking it out of myself. So now I'm taking it out on you guys. You know, don't tell me that you can't have untraditional meals. Uh, you know, that's, I'm, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to do it. You know what? The pilgrims didn't, the pilgrims had your mother, had your mother's fucking green bean casserole? No. You can't have mac and cheese because they didn't have mac and cheese. Get them. If they had mac and cheese, they would slit each other's throats to have one. I said that shit on the podcast. I was like, if a pilgrim tasted mac and cheese, he'd bust a nut and fucking start slaughtering people so we could have more of it. So stop with that. All right? They didn't have all the stuff. They didn't put sausage in stuffing. They didn't do all that stuff. All right, so how about this? You can have the traditional things at Thanksgiving. I'll give you that. But if somebody brings some dope shit over that's incredible, then make that part of the tradition too. Because I'm going to tell you what, you you come to my house with some truffle oil, fucking creamy mac and cheese, that shit is staying. And if somebody doesn't like it, I'll fling a fucking hot pallet on whoever doesn't want its head. And I'll eat it off their fucking head. So, I mean, that's got to stop now too. Enough of the, oh, the pill, you know, it's straight traditional. No. No, if it's good, it comes in. Okay. That's, you know, so another thing that they did, the pilgrims had, which is, you know, they got, had, they had cod, they had fish. People aren't putting that on there. All right. So what? So somebody can't cut, show up with some shrimp. Listen, if, you, if nobody lets you show up with shrimp or mac and cheese, come to the Versey house. Okay. I mean, as long as I know you, it'd be weird if I didn't know you, but if you know me, and you hit me up and go, Paul, they don't let me bring shrimp and mac and cheese. And you come into my fucking house. And then my wife will yell at me going, how dare you invite people from a podcast? Are you out of your fucking mind? Uh, <laughs> say, Paul, why are there five guys outside holding shrimp and mac and cheese? Uh, I'd be like, oh, I kind of on uh, 599. I kind of told everybody. <laughs> I told everybody that if they had no place to go. Um, well, you better get them the fuck out of here, okay? Because I can't. All right. Um, what else is going on in the world now, guys? I know people want me to talk about Tommy DeVito and the Italian quarterback from the New York Giants. Um, you know what's frustrating about this? What's frustrating about the Giants winning now is we had the Jets beat with 30 seconds left. And instead of going for the one yard, 
we put a kicker in who had knee surgery the next day. Think about that. Graham Gano is one of the best. The, the Giants have one of the best field goal kickers in the league. I would say top three or five in the league, hands down. The guy is amazing. His percentage is great. We put him in for a chip shot and he misses it. And the next day he's in surgery for knee surgery. That means that either somebody on the Giants fucked up so bad that they don't know that their kicker is suited up to be in a game with, with knee surgery, with, with needing knee surgery, or they knew that he needed knee surgery, but they're like, oh, he could kick a chip shot. He's okay. This is a surgery that doesn't have to happen. Uh, either way, it's a complete blunder. Knowing that, you give the ball to Saquon Barkley, you give the ball to whatever, however you want to do it, even a quarterback sneak, you get one yard, the game is over, you beat the Jets. And guess what? Now you're one game back. All right. And we fucked up in Buffalo. Uh, that could have been a win. The Giants could easily be 500 right now. I know that's Monday morning quarterback. I know could have, would have, should have. I get it. But now we're losing these good draft picks, which I like because I don't think you tank. You don't tank in the NFL. I don't think. Listen, you could play to not have the greatest team out there and still play hard if you have one win. You'd be like, all right, let's let some... You know, if you know you're not going to make the playoffs, I don't have anything. I don't have any problem or I have anything wrong with. I don't think there's anything wrong with letting some second stringers and third stringers get time to see what you have for next year. I don't mind that. But a full on tanking, knowing that you're going to lose, wanting to lose, like not scoring on purpose. That's shit that the Giants just won't do. And I respect I respect that. OK, I really do. But I don't feel like. um I don't feel like the Giants, they're, they're just in this really weird situation for me right now because they're losing draft picks. I don't know if they could if they could really win. They haven't beaten great teams. But then again, we got this quarterback who's on a, kind of on a little bit of a roll. So if he gets another win and a couple of these NFC, t- NFC uh, teams lose, then the Giants are like in the cusp for the wild card, but you don't have. So I just don't know what the right thing to do is. It will be exciting if Tom, I mean, by the way, Tommy Cutlets is an incredible nickname, especially for somebody like me. Uh, So do I love that there's an Italian quarterback on the Giants? Yes. Do I love that the Giants are actually, you could look at the TV and it's not 30 to five. Yes. (laughs) I like that. Uh, Do I like seeing Saquon Barkley happy and some of these giant players happy? Yes. Uh, even though, I mean, we are hurt now, Dexter Lawrence, this one's hurt. That one's, I mean, half of our team is just, uh, Daniel Jones out, Darren Waller out, you know, uh, uh, Andrew Thomas out, you know, Saquon was out for a while. Now Dexter Lawrence was out. Um, so with the, with the injuries and all that stuff, I just feel like it's a, a, a tough hill to climb, but the fact that we're trying to climb it some way shape or form I'll, I'll take i guess but um yeah we'll see what happens when they play a good team and and a team that can really get after it. i i don't see i don't see tommy cutlets really as much as i hate to say this i don't see tommy cutlets really doing anything big against the 49ers or the or the eagles but if he did that would be amazing so i don't know this whole thing though everybody in the stadium doing this I I feel like it's early. Does that make sense? I feel like it's a little early for everybody to be doing this. I mean, they were doing this when we had three wins. We got four. What do we have? Four fucking wins. I mean, it's it's a little. It seems a little premature that the whole stadium is going like this, and <laughs> we have a losing record, and we've done nothing to have everybody go like this. You know. I mean, I look. You want to do this for the five touchdowns? He's got five touchdowns in a couple games. Great. But let's just not. I feel like New Yorkers, we do get a little hype. I remember the Knicks won one playoff game and everyone's chanting, we want Brooklyn when they had the best, you know, best team in the East. And we won one game and then lost in five to Atlanta. After we won one game and in, in, in people are outside chanting, we want Brooklyn. I mean, we it wasn't even the next series we would have had. So New Yorkers get a little crazy. It is funny. It's hilarious to see them do that. Uh it's really hilarious to see it. 
<laughs> Only New Yorkers would be like, yeah, hey, fuck you know what I'm talking about. Nobody fucking business. New York. This is New York. And then you lose in five. Only that only happens in New York from what I've seen. Um, but it it is cool that the Knicks are good, my Giants are good, the Yankees are spending two million, two hundred million dollars, and they they can't do anything. Um, so it's kind of like status quo because the Knicks will get a certain place. I think they need one more piece to take it to another level. And uh, the Giants have a guy named Tommy DeVito from New Jersey playing starting quarterback for them with four wins. So let's just see. But everybody just pumps their brakes just a little bit. Everybody just calms down. Let's let Tommy Cutlets get into some little turmoil. I want to see Tommy Cutlets on a third and eight with the game on the line. Throw a fucking bullet. That's right on target. Look confident. Get up to the line. Spike the ball. Stop the clock. Get down and get a game-winning thing against a good team. And then I'll be like, oh, shit, Tommy Cutlass. Okay? Then I'll do this shit. But until then, we just need to chill out. Uh, I will say this. Tommy DeVito's father might be one of the funniest characters I've ever seen in sports. When he's looking around at his family in the stands and you could read his lips go, that's their fourth and three play was the most Italian shit ever. He just looks like he's, and he does, he's outside in the parking lot smoking cigars. He's His son just got the starting job and he's going, that's their fourth and three play. It was so priceless and fucking incredible to see an Italian guy. Like, cause you know, after the game, Tommy, come here, come here. Come, no, congratulations. I'm listen. I'm happy for you, my son. You're my son. God bless you. I love you. You started quarterback for the Giants. We're all proud. The community's proud. What the fuck is he doing on fourth and three? Now I got both of my hands doing. What's he doing on fourth and three? Can't you? And this is how Italian fathers are. I'm being dead serious. Can't you go and tell them this play makes no fucking sense, Tommy? Tommy, you gotta tell them. That you're not comfortable. You see the linebacker knowing. Well, so now you're going to get hurt? No, no, no. Like, uh, that's how it time. My father would do that. Well, can, my father, can I talk? To, I'll talk to the coach if you want me. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's not fucking Little League. It's not Pee Wee. Like, this guy's making $10 million a year. He's an NFL coach. You can't my father go up. Yeah, gonna, come here, Dable. Come here. <laughs> Tommy DeVito's dad. Yeah, Brian Dable. Come here for a sec. Let me talk to you for a sec. Get over here. Get over here. Listen, I appreciate you put my son in. That's good and everything. Look, on fourth and three, that's your fucking plan. I mean, what are you, are you, are you nuts? Dude, I want to get a wig and do that. I honestly want to get a wig and do that. What's why? Oh, okay. I'll answer that in a second. Um, How far are we? Where are we? Uh, oh, my God. That's so great, right? No, no, no. Not for nothing. Listen, tell Saquon, you know, the family would like an autograph. You know, he's a good kid. But I got a question for you. I mean, Dable's got to know, fourth and three, that's unacceptable. You go deep. Everything is go deep. You go deep. You got that fast kid. You, you just let it go. Um, I'll stop now. Anyway, so um, I am getting ready to... Uh, do some do some shows in the I'm going to be doing some some short sets in the city getting ready uh, and then um, we got the show New Year's Eve guys I cannot wait for you guys to uh, to come into the building there and see that and uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking of stupid shit right now I'm a little tired a little out of it tired and uh, what can you do but you guys are the best. And thank you guys for listening to my Instagram lives. I'm thinking about doing it regularly. But then if I say that and I set a schedule and then I got to go do something like right now, I am coaching my daughter's basketball. I'm actually coaching the the fifth and sixth grade girls. And um, we have a small district. So there's not enough girls to um, there's not enough girls to really have like all these teams. So we're just going to like break it up. But like I'm kind of like the go to head guy doing it for everybody and i'm like running these drills and i gotta tell you i love it it's really fun to watch them get better because of shit you say and um my daughter was like dad are you coaching and i was like yeah i'm coaching and she was like yes 
So that for me right there, that's everything. Like I don't give a shit. So I'm going to be coaching my daughter's team. I'm going to be watching my, my son's team. People ask me how my son is doing and he's doing good, man. He had a, he had a really good game. The other game man. his, his first scrimmage game, he hit like four threes and shit. And he's got a game tonight that I'm going to. So I'm excited about that. So I'm just hanging with my kids, um, you know, working from home, doing spots when I can, and then getting ready to really, uh, to really hit it hard uh, and get, get ready to go, go in December. So get those tickets to the Gramercy, get those tickets to the special, get those tickets anywhere guys. And um, yeah, for anybody that was asking me, a lot of people reaching out, I did see the shout out. I posted the shout out from Joey Diaz. Somebody asked me what that's like. It was amazing. You know, I, I told a story last night on the Instagram. I told a story last night on the Instagram live that um, people were like, that's awesome. But um I'll tell you a cool story um, that when um, I just remember during pandemic, maybe like three years ago, three, four years ago, I was out there and I was doing well, man. And I was, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I was killing shows and things are going well. And, you know, I got tired of the staff and people being like, man, that was one of the funniest shows we had all year. And I was like, yeah, you know, I want more and more people to see that, you know, I appreciate it. And then I heard Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan talking and, um, you know, they were talking about comedians like, Oh, this kid, you know, Joey was like, uh, this fucking kid's funny, this and that. And he was talking about somebody else. And I remember talking to, uh, my producer of the show and just talking to my wife. And I'm like, man, I was like, I wish these guys could see me, you know, I want them to, you know, why, why aren't they talking about me like that? I want them to see me because you know, things are going well. And this is, this is the hour that Netflix said belonged with them when, when they, you know, took it and, you know, and then to end up doing Rogan and then to have Joey Diaz say that, man, it was really, it really meant a lot. Cause when you have people that have seen so much comedy and people that have been around it and people that know the business for so long, see what you're doing and recognize it and say nice things, man. It's, um, it really means a lot. So, uh, so when I was asked that question, yeah, it was really, really cool to, to see that. And, um, you know, just, uh, just have people like your work is fucking awesome. But when it's peers that do it and know it, it's, it's even better. So, uh, I feel very blessed and humbled about that. And, uh, now obviously I'm getting shy and weird about it. So, um, I will stop and I will say, thank you guys for listening to five ninety nine. I will have a guest in studio next week for 600. I do not know who yet, but there's some people in mind. And I um, hope you guys get me uh, on the road. Go to paulversey.com. Going to be looking at some uh, some stuff to do on the road, maybe some merchandise, maybe even for New Year's. But uh, I don't know. So check out Bone to Pick with Bobby Kelly. We're doing the football picks. Anything better uh, still, me and Burr and Andrew Themlis. Uh, shout out to the Greek, three, uh, the Greek Freak, the Beverly Hills Kid. And um, of course, this show, The Verzi Effect, please rate and review, write your stuff about the show. It moves the show up. Get these podcasts everywhere. You get your podcast, Spotify, iTunes and everything. Until next week, I am out of here. Love you guys. Love you.